Hi, welcome to another Flip Chart Friday. I'm John Lowden and this is Hyperdanker. Today's episode we're talking about turning spreadsheets into web apps. So I get quite excited when I see businesses using spreadsheets and clipboards and filing cabinets because I think all of that data is at risk. There's lots of things that inconsistencies or you know a user mistypes a number, they break a macro in a spreadsheet and there ends up in a bit of a scenario where that's not quite calculating the way it should. This is a great indicator that a web app would be useful to this company, but I think it would be quite good to focus on it as a flip chart today because it really starts to get us to focus about some of the risks of using spreadsheets in our business, especially when it relates to things like sales processes or standard operating procedures on how we deliver our service. So let's jump in, let's get started. So first of all, how do you know you could benefit from a web app? So a lot of people are like, oh, I want to build an application or I can see that kind of software is like innovation. I'd like to be like a modern company and have an app for our tool. Um, but I'm not really sure if we're ready for a web app. Do we even need that? There's a couple of kind of simple things you can look at. Are you doing a lot of repetitive tasks? So are you doing something over and over and over again? Which is meaning that you're having to build a spreadsheet to keep a record of it. That's a really good indicator that you would benefit from having a system. So think about that like a, like a sales process. So if you have a CRM system that you're actually having like all your kind of opportunities working across that Kanban board, the whole reason why that exists is because if you weren't doing that, you would literally be writing down, I spoke to Gary, we spoke about a website, I checked in with him last week, and you would be keeping these notes, but then if you lose that note or you lose that email or that Word document, you've lost your notes on what you're actually doing with it, whereas a CRM puts it all in one place. So that's an indicator you would need one. Another one is you're leveraging a lot of forms. So do you have lots of paperwork to fill out? I see a lot of companies that when they go out and do a survey, they fill out a lot of documentation and it's like paper. As soon as you create a paper record, you have to do something with it. So where is that going? When you go back to the office, does it get retyped in, manually typed in to a system? So it's kind of already half in a web app. Is it scanned into a system or it's kept in triplicate, which means you need filing cabinets? How are those filing cabinets secured? How are you dealing with things like GDPR and the data security around what you're capturing? These are all concerns and they're all things you need to be thinking about. So if you're using a lot of spreadsheets, you're using a lot of forms, you're doing repetitive tasks, good indicators. Are you trying to build and keep a process going? So have you got things mapped out like here is our Kanban board? Like I used to have a massive whiteboard in the office that had here was the project and there was like 27 stages of sign off to delivery of a website or an application project. And I used to manually move the postcards as they went down. Now over time we built that as like a web app and it allowed us to manage how we actually like take that process through. The last one is, are you looking for a system to store your data that doesn't have like, sorry, like doesn't have the functionality that you would want to do that. So imagine this in the sense of a CRM is built for sales, but what about pre-sales? What about things like networking? So I still want to kind of track that. So when I have a one-to-one -one with someone and we have an agreement, and we have like a certain like, I'll look into referring you to this person or you'll look into that for me or I'll put you in touch with this. You still want to remember that kind of stuff. Now that isn't classically what's stored in a CRM. Likewise, logistics information and tracking and surveys are not classically stored in a CRM. They can be, but they're often not. So are you trying to shoehorn your process into something that already exists for a different purpose? Again, that could be a really good indicator that a web app is really the thing you're looking for. So while we're saying we're looking for it, it's important to focus on why webs are, web apps are valuable. So why are they valuable? What's the, what's the big thing with them? So when machines do the coding, they're less prone to human errors. So if you tell it that you have to total these things together, it will get it right every time. Uh, it doesn't mistype, it doesn't go to sleep, it doesn't get sick, it doesn't you know have to isolate, it's just a machine. So it will continue to do its job as long as you feed it the data. It can also get automated data. So as you go out and about and you do your job, the system can get fed with information that it needs in order to push your business forward. The data is stored in the cloud, so I've went to offices where, and I'm not even joking to you, it's like a school hall and there's just a sea of filing cabinets. 
Um, I try to contain my excitement when I see this, but really it's quite horrendous because it probably means that there's hundreds of thousands of documents that are in that room that exist in a physical form only. So if there was a fire, they would lose all that data. If they want to say, how many customers do we have in the construction sector, by the way? No idea. They're probably in the cabinets there. Well, how, how are the cabinets organised? Uh, alphabetically. Yeah, but then we ran out of space in B, so there's actually six sections of the unit that have got B base filing cabinets in them. And you're like, okay, oh, well, I've seen we've done this one here for uh, Barry Reynolds. Ah, sorry, that's not in the system yet. I think uh, Gary's got that in the van. Instantly we can see the encounters issues. If everything's stored in the cloud, we could very quickly just say, I want all the jobs from this category folded up and totaled. I want to see that what jobs are in progress, what kind of status they're in, and I can start to interrogate the data. So storing it here is much more secure for it. Now, one up from a filing cabinet is actually a server, like a, a actual box in the office, like a NAS or a server that sits in a cupboard. But if you think about it, it's just as vulnerable. So somebody gives that a kick, or the office catches fire, God forbid, all that data goes as well. So as much as you possibly can, back up things to the cloud. We're actually making a conscious effort not to build a NAS server in this office. So even though we have large files, like video files, websites and apps, we're actually looking at backing that stuff into a cloud. So we might use stuff like Silverback, which is a backup system where we can have like storage areas set aside so we can hold these images and websites and apps without actually storing them here locally. Anything that's stored local is always at risk of getting destroyed or broken. So definitely one to remember. Can your business calculate and leverage its data? So one of the main things that we get asked to do with web apps is to calculate the profit on a job. So if I go out and I'm saying, right, I need three guys, a van, X amount of tools, X amount of materials, we quoted 2,000 for the job, were we profitable? Now, the assumption is every job we do is profitable, but it's not true. And if there's amends or a mistake or something has to be patched or fixed, you actually might find that you take a very small profit or, God forbid, a loss. But it's good to know that because there's things that you can identify where you go, wait a minute, this type of client isn't actually profitable for us. So eight out of 10 clients in this sector, we end up losing money. So we either need to price the jobs a little bit higher or we need to make a conscious effort not to onboard those. That's a really good use case for how a web app can be used to kind of identify where these kind of wastages of money are going. Um, even something as simple as fuel, it doesn't sound like something you'd really focus on, but if you have like 200 vans on the road, the actual fuel cost, like the petrol or the diesel that you're buying for that fleet, it is actually a finite resource. So you need to measure that and say, if we spend over this amount of diesel on this job, we're actually going to take a loss because there's three vans driving from Glasgow to Aberdeen every day and it's actually mounting up. It would be cheaper buying a kind of hotel or somewhere for the guys to stay overnight or refactoring in the job or not taking jobs within a certain radius so that we're not encountering that problem. There's no more paperwork. So there's no printing, file cabinets, misplaced paperwork. Um, and I'm, I'm the world's worst for stuff like that as well, so I'm, I'm hardly giving a critique for something I don't do myself, but having it as a web app, having it digitally as PDFs, it's just better for you, it's better for the client, and it takes the stress down massively. Um, I had a guy recently I was speaking to, and his process is on pen and paper, and what he kind of mentioned to me as well is his clients had actually said, oh, that's, that's terrible, son, have you got to fill in all day documents um, just to kind of do the survey? And it kind of dawned on them that his competitors and other kind of sectors, they're all doing this with tablets now. So they've actually got guys with tablets doing the survey digitally, maybe even taking the photos with a tablet. It's all getting pulled back into the CRM. It's getting quoted in the office and then the customer's getting dealt with in a very efficient manner. Whereas you're filling that out with a pen and you're like, ah, oh, my viral's ran out and, you know, I can't read the guy's writing or I can't quite make that out. So there's problems with it. The other thing that presents itself is we can actually track. So there's tracking, there's analytics, there's alerts. So tracking could be, I know where the agent is. So if the salesperson's out in Fife giving a quote, I can see he's there. Analytics can be, as we said, how many in this sector or what's the kind of sales like. Alerts could be a reminder. You know, it's been three days since you spoke to that customer. Well, how do you know that? Well, there's no note in the CRM. So you basically not spoke to the customer. 
Oh, I have spoke to them, but it's not logged them. So it's either training or it's helping them stick to your standard operating procedure to give value. Right? So that could be baked into the process as well. So it's my time to draw uh, to give you an actual real example of how this would work. So I wanted to kind of show a use case for how this might be useful. Um, so I can use it for an example of it. So we had a client, they came to us and they had a fuel salesperson. So they actually had multiple. So let's just say they had 20 for the sake of the example. So the 20 salespeople that had to come out and do a survey. So their survey had to be conducted in three areas. So there was basically three different surveys that had to be carried out. In addition to the three surveys, they had to go through a presentation and then they had to update the CRM when they got back and their timesheet. So there was effectively six actions that that person had to do every time they went out to do a sale. So you bring a salesperson on, you say, here's our process, get this done. So what happens is they go out, they do a survey and they fill in the paperwork as best they can. There's no feedback, there's no guidance, that document can't talk to them, it can't say, oh, that's actually really large. Um, make sure you factor in for an additional one of these. So the survey doesn't help them, it's just a document. So you're creating paperwork, all right? So let's just say they do one. The next thing is they go through the presentation. So I'm a salesperson, I like to kind of go through every slide, I like to showcase the value to the customer. So let's just say for talking sake, there's a five slide deck presentation to show. So John Lydon goes through it, he focuses on every slide and he gets conversion of say 75% for the jobs that he goes out to cope. Dennis, he's always in a mad rush, likes to cram in loads of meetings, so he kind of skips out slide two, slide three and slide five. So he shows these two slides, races through it and his conversion is say 25%. His survey, can never really read his writing and this is where the problem becomes. So this would be something that could be visualised. So how long are they spending on each slide? We could catch that analytically. The next thing, of course, is when we get back to the office, both John and Dennis put these details into the CRM. That means manually rekeying all this data or taking a scan or a photograph. And then it's like you're taking something that's bad. You're making it worse because now it's a photograph and you're zooming in and you're like, I can't really read that writing. You might be looking at that in six months' time, try to work out, what did I write? Never mind someone else try to write my, read my writing. Um, and then the last one is a timesheet. When did you get there on that job? Um, I don't really know. I think it was like half 11. I would just call it half 11. <laughs> Reality is, you arrived there at, say, uh, let's say 10, 52. Okay, so there's the extra time you're either not getting paid for or the client's not getting billed for. So the timesheet itself is an issue. Now, let's just look at that exact same scenario as a web app, all right? So the agents get shown the system and it's consistent. So you have videos training them how the system works. They go in to the client and they say, I'm going to conduct a survey. So right now it's a product. What in products interest you? One, two or three. Client says, I'm interested in products one or two, okay. So they select one and two on their system. They go through the same sort of process, but now this is a digital form. So they have two digital forms that automatically flow off the back of each other. They share the consensus of the information that's the same. Things like the client's name, the address, the measurements, anything that might be relevant between the two, it doesn't ask twice. It asks once and then it populates both forms separately for the agent. Three is not relevant, so they don't do that. At the end of when they've done the survey, that is automatically sent back to the CRM. So this part here, the CRM, automatically gets that for when they start it and when they've updated these documents. Then they go through the presentation, and as soon as they open that presentation deck, we start a timer. So we can see that one minute, two minutes, one minute, ten seconds, and one minute. So that also gets captured by the CRM. So now I can actually see why well, I know why John gets higher conversion than Dennis because Dennis actually misses out these sections that John spends two minutes or 10 seconds or one minute on, and that actually can impact his conversion. So because that's automated, I'm getting multiple bites of the cherry back to the CRM. So when they come back to the office, I don't need them to put it in the CRM, it's already there. I don't really need to know what they're doing in the presentation because I can go and look at their timesheet. 
I don't need to know the survey because the survey is cutting down their work. So not only is it faster for them to do that with the client, which is a better experience, it's actually more analytical and there's a bigger advantage to the company. And of course, a machine doesn't make a mistake like a timesheet. So it says that that application got opened at 10.52 and it got closed off at 1.40. So I can see the start and the end of when the appointment took place. I can even track the guy in his van or with a smartwatch or some kind of device. And then I can report that all back to the business, to the customer, to whoever it's relevant to. I can also do sort of fancy things and we'll talk about this in another flip chart about how we can use automation and triggers because I could actually have at multiple stages before the job is given, it could trigger it and say, just to give you a heads up, tomorrow you've got a job in Fife that's 20% more travel than you're used to accounting for. Make sure you leave a little bit earlier or the traffic's meant to be busy tomorrow, leave an hour earlier than you normally would. I can also do things with a customer. So after 20 minutes of the job and the person's nicely nestled back in their van, they get a feedback to give what the customer experience was like, how the customer seemed to react to the presentation. But the customer can also get that. So did John turn up in uniform today? Did he take you through the presentation? Do you feel that your questions were answered? So because they're given that feedback from two different ways, that can also end up in the CRM. So there's a lot more weight and power to doing this than just filling in a form. And that's why businesses, increasingly so, will be building technology for their business. So that's what web apps can do for you as a use case. And that's just one use case, there's lots. So tips and takeaways. Try not to have a system that allows users to create their own solutions. So if the system isn't there, then people will do things like a spreadsheet or they'll do an email, or they'll do it in the back of a fag packet. And that's how your brand's going to be perceived, all right? It's not going to join the information up, and it's certainly not going to be something you can back up. Ask yourself, what are you recording manually in paperwork or in spreadsheets that could be digitized, and how could that be useful to you? What options are open for your business to do that? Don't always go with bespoke solutions. So as much as we build custom web apps, and that's kind of like a big part of our business, it's not always necessary. If you've got a really simple sales process, consider just taking a CRM. A good example of this would be things like invoicing. A lot of invoices, yeah, I even get them now where the invoice is written in like a spreadsheet rather than written in like a tool like Zero or Free Agent. Uh, if you're an RBS customer, I think you get Free Agent for free. These tools often cost like six pounds a month and it's professionally branded, it has tracking, you can see if they've opened it. Um, it adds the VAT in automatically, you can see your profit and loss. Massive benefits, but it isn't a bespoke tool. So consider, is there tools out there that do what I'm looking to do first, before you make that jump to go and bespoke? Um, often things like uh, applications are valid for things like innovation grants or government support, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and one of the big ones is, if you're doing this kind of thing, you can claim a lot of this back as R&D, because in many cases, it's innovation. So you're doing something in your sector that's never been done before. You're innovating and you're sort of creating a new technology, a new piece of value within your sector. So you can claim back a portion of that investment from HMRC because you're making a new and improved innovation on a process or a part of your service that you're offering. All right. So that's us came to another end of a flip chart Friday. Thanks again for watching. If you're interested in working with Hybrid Anchor potentially on a web app, we've got a nice kind of process that minimizes the cost and investment before you kind of jump into there and see if you actually need that. Um, you can email me at info at hybridanchor.com or you can email us on 0141-6486-999 with your website emergency. We're more than happy to help. Um, likewise, if there's any topics like this that you'd like me to cover, please do reach out to us and let us know. Just say, suggest a topic and then drop me a few ideas. Always happy to create content that's valuable to you. All that's left to say is thank you, and I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.